So, um, I'm going to be speaking about joint work with Connie Reach. And, um, and okay, so it has to do with something called Newton Okunkov's bodies for Grassmannians. So let me just sort of quickly review the definition of the Grassmannians so we're all on the same page. So the Grassmannian GRKN is the set of all vector subspaces of CN which have dimension K, will represent elements by full rank K by N matrices M. And for I, so we have some Pluger coordinates on the Grassmannian. For I, a K element subset of one through N, P sub I of M, is the determinant of the k by k submatrix of M. In columns I, so these are the Pluger coordinates. Um, so, okay. So now, um, so now let me kind of give just a few words of overview about this talk. So, so I first want to describe the X cluster structure on the Grassmannian. And uh, sorry for the terminal. This is, this is X cluster as an X and A cluster varieties. Um, so I want to start by describing the, the X cluster structure together with a natural valuation <coughs> that you can associate to, to any cluster. Next, I want to describe what's called the Nudnokunkov body associated to a choice of cluster and the valuation. Um, then I want to give a result about the lattice points of these Nudnokunkov bodies, and in particular, um, what was very surprising to us is that our formula for lattice points connects these objects to the quantum cohomology ring of the Grassmannian. Um, so I'll be curious to know if anyone here has seen um, connections of cluster theory to quantum cohomology. Um, and, uh, and then I want to give, I'll say something about a more explicit, about an explicit description of delta G plus applications to torque degenerations. Okay, so this is the overview, and now I need to um, now I need to give some more background. Okay, and um, the background um, so part of the background is is playback graphs, which came up in Sergey's talk yesterday. Um, so these objects were introduced by Postnikov. What are the buttons to make these go up and down? Or do I just use my hands? Okay, all right, okay. So, so a playback graph is a planar
by colored graph G in a disk with boundary vertices labeled one through N in order. And so let me draw a picture. Um, so the internal vertices are either solid or hollow. So they are bicolored, but not necessarily bipartite. And um, the point of these objects is to give a kind of combinatorial description of, of clusters. So, okay, so let me first, um, so I, so yeah, so let me, let me describe first a kind of invariant of these graphs. So there's an algorithm which is called rules of the road or zigzag paths. And roughly speaking, it says, so this is gonna be a recipe for producing walks in the graph. And the rules are that we're going to turn right at solid vertices, and we're going to turn left at hollow vertices. And now, given G, the trip T sub I starts at I and follows the rules to end up at some other boundary vertex. They don't have to. They don't have so to. The, the so, exactly. Thank you. We turn maximally right at a solid vertex and maximally left at a hollow vertex. Mm -hmm. um, so, given G, the trip TI, it starts at some boundary vertex, and then we take a walk in the graph following the rules of the road to end up at some other boundary vertex, which we call pi G of I. Oh, and I should also say the boundary vertices should be incident to a unique edge. So if I start at a given vertex, there's only one way to, to start my trip. So, okay, so let's, let's do this example here. Um, if I, so let me just record what the trips do. If I start at one, I take this edge, I go left, right, left, and left to get to three. If I start at two, I go straight out, I turn right, left, right, left, and right to get to four. <coughs> If I start at three, I go left, right, left to five. If I start at four, I go right, left, left, right, left to one. And if I start at five, I go left, right, left, right, and end at two. So um, the collection of trips define a permutation. So there's many such graphs, but um, in this talk, I'm just going to be interested in certain of them. So a playback 
graph G, we'll say has type Kn if it has K times N minus K plus one regions. And the trip permutation is this particular Grassmannian permutation that sends one to k plus one, two to k plus two, three to k plus three, and so on. n minus k to n, and then we start over at one, like so. So these are the graphs that we'll be interested in, and it's not obvious from how I've presented it, but there are many such graphs of type Kn. Okay, and now I want to explain how to produce um, cluster data from these graphs, and we're gonna use the trips to do so. So given such a G, we're going to use trips Ti to label the faces of Gi. So each, are there any questions? Each Ti divides the disk into two parts. what's to the left and what's to the right of the trip. And I'm going to put an I in each region to the left. So if we go back to this example here, so my trip starting at one went like this, left, right, left, left to three. And so what's to the left is these regions here. So I'll put a one here. And now if I go to my trip starting at two, it goes right, left, right, left, right. So like this. And what's to the left is these four regions. So I'll put twos here. And if I continue, then my face labels will be one, five, four, five, two, five, two, four, three, four, and two, three. And um, it's, uh, well, it can be shown that um, after we do this, every face will be labeled by exactly K numbers. So in this example, in our example, K is two and is five, and we have exactly two numbers in every face. Okay, so now actually, I don't like this way of labeling faces. I want to map them to partitions instead. So we're going to map K element subsets of one through N to the partitions or Young diagrams contained in a K by N minus K rectangle. So, um, and explicitly, I want to identify a K element subset with um, a Young diagram such that I labels the vertical steps of the Young diagram in a canonical way. So I'll just show an, an example. So let me so let me just redraw the example I just had. Okay, so here K is two and N is five. 
So we're going to be working inside of a k by n minus k rectangle. And now, for example, if I'm thinking about, so every Young diagram inside of this rectangle, I will identify with a walk in the Young diagram from the northeast corner to the southwest corner. So if I take a walk, then this step is labeled one, this step is labeled, the vertical step is labeled two, horizontal is labeled three, vertical is labeled four, and this is five. And I'm going to identify my Young diagram with the labels of the vertical steps. Okay, so, so this two, four here will be identified with this Young diagram. And if we continue, then my labeling is like, is like this, okay? So in Schubert calculus, one labels Schubert classes by partitions. This is a common thing. Um, but for some reason, when people talk about Plucher coordinates, it's not so common to label them by partitions. But um, anyway, in the results I'll talk about, the labeling by partitions is really essential. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, so now let me say something about the cluster X structure. <laughs> and so I'm going to describe something that we call network charts. And the combinatorics was developed by Postnikov in the setting of total positivity. Um, so he was working over reals and positive reals, um, but everything makes sense over complex numbers. And this was, um, this was further illuminated in a paper of Mueller and Speyer. Okay, so, okay, so let me explain how these charts work. So we're gonna put a variable X mu will associate a variable in the region labeled by mu. in G. Um, and now I want to, I need to work with a particular orientation of my graph. In order to talk about the cluster X structure, I need to put an orientation on my graph. And there's one orientation that I want to work with. So, um, so let me show the orientation. Well, okay, so it's going to have sources at one and two and sinks elsewhere. It's going to be a cyclic and it'll have the property that every solid vertex has a unique outgoing edge and each hollow vertex has a unique ingoing edge. So since solids have a unique ingoing, these had better be pointing out. So this is the orientation. that I want, and there's a, there's a lemma in an old paper that we have with Postnikov and Spire, which is that each such playback graph has a unique acyclic orientation O of G with source set I, one through K, such that it's perfect, which is this property up here. Okay, 
and I should say for experts, we're working with reduced playback graphs, which is different from um, the setting that Sergey was in yesterday. Okay, so, so such an orientation exists and we're always going to choose this one. insert a hollow dot between two and the adjacent vertex. Um, what's wrong with that? Well, then it would change the, the orientation. Then, I mean, the, the, the lemons may still be true, but the, the orientation in the rest of your diagram would be different. If I have a hollow vertex of degree two, well, that won't change the anything. The is that the, the <laughs> edge adjacent to that external vertex two is incoming. Uh huh. Then, That's fine. Yes, you're right. Okay. Okay, so now let me let me give um, the construction of the network chart. So this is going to be a map from C star to the N, N is the dimension of the Grassmannian, to GR N minus K of CN. So it's going to be a map of a torus into the Grassmannian. My coordinates on the, on the torus are the X mu's labeling faces. The image point we'll just denote by phi g x of x mu. And there's several ways you can define it. I will define it by using, by giving formulas for the Plucker coordinates. So how does this go? Um, so maybe I will use this picture here. Okay, so informally, my jth Pluker coordinate of the image is a generating function for flows, which are sets of non-intersecting paths from our source set i, which is 1 through k, to j. So as I mentioned, there's several ways to define these network charts. Um, the fact that the definition I'm giving is equivalent to the original, is due to a result of Kelly Talaska. And now let me give an example to kind of explain more explicitly what I mean by flows. So here is my playback graph. <coughs> and here is my perfect orientation. So, um, so let me explain this just by showing a few examples. So to compute the Plucker coordinate P14, so J is 14, we look at flows, in other words, non-intersecting paths from the source set 1 and 2 to 1 and 4. So these are going to be path collections that necessarily send 1 to 1 and 2 to 4. Okay, 
So one going to one is not anything interesting, but for two going to four, I can either travel like this, or I can travel like this. So there are two paths from two to four. And the weight of a given path will be defined to be the product of the variables to the left. So my first path went around precisely these two regions, and so its weight will be the product of these two variables. And my second path surrounded one additional region, like this, and so its weight will be the same, but with this additional factor. And so therefore, according to my definition, P14 has this expression. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm defining a map of a torus into the Grassmannian, and the way I'm defining it is I'm telling you what are the Pluker coordinates of the image. And it's a statement, I mean it's a, I guess it's a, a theorem, the content of the statement is that this formula for Pluker coordinates satisfies Pluker relations. So I'll just show a couple of examples, and then I'll define <coughs> evaluation. Okay, so Okay, so P12, what's P12? Well, P12, according to this recipe, should be a generating function for flows from the source set, which is one and two, to uh, one and two, and there's only the trivial path collection which does that, and so P12 is one. And um, P14, we already wrote out, was like this. So I'm not going to write out all of the Pluker coordinates. Maybe I'll write out three. Let me write out another one. P3, four has to do with the flows from one and two to three and four. Okay. Uh, so if I want to send one and two to three and four, I'd better send two to three and one to four. So two has to go to three only surrounding the two by three rectangle, and one goes to four. Um, it needs to not, not intersect my other path, so it has to surround one, two, three, four, five regions. And so the, the weight of P34 is the product of the weights of those two paths, and it'll be this. They should be non-intersecting, yeah. Okay, so you can write out your list of five to choose two Pluker coordinates. And now I want to map my Pluker coordinates to, to an integer lattice point in Zn which is obtained by choosing 
the leading or lowest degree term in PJ. So, um, okay, I didn't give myself very much space, so let me, let me rewrite P12 like right here. And now I'm just gonna make a table. Um, and in this table, I'm going to list the partitions that appear as regions of my graph. So, so what do I mean by the leading term? It's a, it's, a, it's a fact, it's a lemma or a proposition that every such polynomial is going to be a polynomial with one monomial that divides the rest. Okay, this is a <coughs> polynomial with one monomial that divides the rest. And so what I'm gonna do is I will map my polynomial to the exponent vector of that leading term. Okay, so. This one, of course, has exponent vector zero, so this is going to map to the all zero vector. Um, P14 has leading monomial <coughs> this, and its exponent vector is, has two one coordinates in positions this and this. And P34, it's, it's only a single monomial, so I just map it to its exponent vector. Lauren, for this one, do you want to take the sum of the two instead of the product? No, so when my, when my flow consists of several paths, the weight of that flow will be the product of the paths. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was doing this quickly. Yeah, so when my Pluker, so when I have several flows, I will sum their weights, but a given flow with multiple paths will have a weight which is the product of the weights of the individual paths. So two, one, 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 zero, zero. Any questions about the construction? So what I'm doing is I'm just mapping my, it's, it's just a map, it's just an assignment uh, from Pluker coordinates to um, integer lattice points. Yeah, yeah, so there's various ways you can prove that, and I'll mention, um, um, I'll say something about that now. Yeah, so I should say that, um, so first of all, in order to have this sort of nice leading term, uh, it was, and in order to have this normalization where my Pluker coordinate P12 is one, it was important to take this particular orientation of my graph. But now, um, the fact, Okay, so it's a fact that the formulas for PJ are polynomials in X mu with a unique monomial dividing the others and also a unique monomial which is divisible by the others. So each of these polynomials will have a unique leading term and a unique sort of co-leading term. I don't know. Um, is this an instance of the g-vector 
F polynomial formula? So it's on the other side, because it's on the X cluster. Yeah, but there is such formula too. You know yeah, I mean? although this is, yeah. Although this is a little stronger in that we actually have honest polynomials instead of right. Laurent polynomials, but it's yeah, it's completely analogous. In this particular setting, yeah, I mean, and and we have the twist map, so we know that we can go back and forth like that. Um, in this particular instance, the fact that this is true can be related to the fact that flows are in bijection with perfect matchings, and there's a structure on perfect matchings of distributive lattice with unique minimal and maximal term. But also, um, so this can be done by combinatorics of matchings, but also there is a more general statement, which is that if you fix a cluster X variety, and any x chart, then each element of the theta basis of Gross, Hacking, Kiel, and Kinsevich can be written as a kind of pointed polynomial in the variables of the x chart. Pointed meaning that there's this unique monomial which divides the rest. So actually this statement was conjectured by Falk and Gontroff, but it follows from the machinery of Gross, Hacking, Kiel, and Kinsevich. Okay, so anyway, so, um, so this is why the valuation makes sense. Okay, so now I want to describe the Nudno Kunkov body. So let's let LR be the space of degree R polynomials in the Plucker coordinates, which you can express as the space of sections. And now we can write, so, so we can define we can de define val g, we can extend its definition to a map on LR. Um, so there's, the, you have a lot of choices in how to define it. You could just use um, the lexicographical order um, when you define your leading term. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to, just as before, express Plucker coordinates in terms of these x variables and, and compute leading terms. And what I'm saying is the definition extends when you're talking about degree r polynomials in Plucker coordinates. And now the newton okunkov body is defined as follows. So it's going to be a big convex hull. And what you're going to do is for every R, you're going to compute the valuation, the image of the valuation map on LR. You're going to renormalize by dividing by R. And we're taking the union over all positive R. And then we take the convex hull and we close it up. So this maybe looks like a small nightmare, and it sort of is. Um, this can be, so Newton Okunkov bodies can be defined in a very, very general setting. The point of them is to generalize the notion of 
the moment polytope associated to a torque variety to a much more general kind of variety. Um, from now on, I'm going to abbreviate Newton Okunkov body by nobody. And the point is that the nobody is related to an arbitrary variety as the moment polytope is to a torque variety. Okay, so, um, so that's the definition. Um, they're rather bad in general. They are convex, but they don't have to be polytopes. And when they're polytopes, they don't need to be integral. So they can be pretty bad. But in our setting, they turn out to be quite good. And now I can finally state a result. And the result I want to talk about is the lattice points of our nobodies. Okay, so <coughs> so the lattice points of delta G in our setting are precisely the valuations of the Pluckers for all for all partitions lambda in the n in the k by k by n minus k rectangle. So we have exactly n choose k lattice points, and moreover, we have an explicit formula. And this formula is extremely simple and just has to do with the combinatorics of partitions. So what's our formula? So for mu, a face of G, the mu coordinate of the valuation of my Plucker coordinate indexed by lambda is, so this is just my notation for the mu coordinate of val lambda, and it's the maximum, it's the length of the maximum diagonal of the set theoretic difference of these two partitions. So let me say what I mean by that. So as an example, If I'm looking at val g of p14, which is identified with this partition, and I'm looking at its coordinate labeled by the 2 by 3 rectangle, then I need to look at the set theoretic difference of this partition minus this one. So I draw my two partitions on top of each other, left justified, and I take out this one. And what's left is a skew shape, and if I look at the various diagonals of slope minus one, the length of the maximum diagonal is one. And so it's saying that, um, now we can check here, we can compare with P14, and we can look at its coordinate in this position, and we should have exactly one. Right? So P14 is my top row, and its coordinate in the position associated to the 2 by 3 rectangle is a 1. Uh -huh. So I don't require that one partition is contained inside the other. I just look at the difference. 
which, what are the boxes <laughs> in this partition which are not in that. So in particular, you only get positive numbers. So yeah, they're not negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, by the way, we would have never found this formula if we had been working with Plucher coordinates indexed by k element subsets. If you try to write this formula in terms of Plucher coordinates indexed by k element subsets, you're never going to see anything. So that's a good reason to do that. And now, uh, so we had this very, very, oh, okay, yeah, so I have a lot of remarks that I want to make about this result. Um, okay, another remark is that this right-hand side of the formula seems to have essentially nothing to do with G. So G is indexing my cluster chart, and the only role of G is to say, what are the mu's indexing my coordinates? So that's the only way that G comes in, but anyway, this sort of combinatorial formula has nothing to do with G. So the only dependence on G is this very mild one, which is that G tells us what are the names of our coordinates. Um, but the other remark I want to make is that this formula, the formula max diag of mu take away lambda, is, comes up in the quantum cohomology ring of the Grassmannian. So this, by a result of Fulton and Woodward, is that, the degree, is that this number is the degree of the lowest power q to the d that occurs when you expand sigma mu sigma lambda complement in the Schubert basis. Okay, so this is in the quantum cohomology ring. So, um, so this seems very, very surprising. So um, maybe later people can tell me if they've ever seen sort of this kind of like connection between something that came out of cluster theory, which turned out to come up in Schubert calculus. Um, the other remark I want to make is that I defined this valuation by using the leading term, the sort of lowest degree term coming from the monomial, which divided all the rest in my polynomial, and I could switch my definition of valuation to be the exponent vector of the co-leading term, which is divisible by all the rest, right? Our polynomials have sort of minimal and maximal terms. I can switch my definition of valuation, and then we also have a totally explicit formula, and then the same statement holds, but it's the degree of the highest power, q to the d. So there's some kind of strange connection. It would be nice to have a geometric proof of this coincidence, and we have some guesses, but no proof yet. Um, three minutes, okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, so, okay, so maybe I'll just make one, maybe I'm going to stop writing and just make a few remarks about the proof of this statement, and um, how we proved this was we checked it for one sort of nicest choice of cluster. We have lots of Gs here indexing clusters. We proved it for one nicest choice of cluster. And then what we wanted to show was that when we mutate it away from our cluster, the formulas change in a predictable, man predictable manner, and the same way on both sides. And this, the way that they change is by a tropicalized cluster A mutation. So one can do that combinatorially on this side. On this side, it was much harder, and so we did some kind of trick where we showed that these formulas arise as valuations of elements of the positive Grassmannian over a field of Puiseaux series. Anyway, okay, so, okay. Anyway, it's a nice trick, but I don't really have time to say more about that. Um, and then maybe the other thing I'll say is that we have a totally explicit expression for these polytopes, so we have facet inequalities, and they come from taking the superpotential of Marsh and Reach, 
and expanding that in terms of a, an A cluster and associating inequalities to that expansion. So, okay, so there's a totally explicit um, inequality description of the polytopes, and in particular, our polytopes are always rational. And this allows us to use general results of Dave Anderson to show that each of our polytopes gives rise to a torque degeneration of the Grassmannian to the associated um, torque variety. And um, yeah, and maybe I'll just say some numerology. So our polytopes are often but not always integral. And um, for G36, there are 34 Playback graphs G, of which 32 give rise to integral newton kuhnkopf bodies. And for GR37, there are 259 Playback graphs, of which 216 are integral. And both of these numbers are products of small primes. And I'm very curious about the next number in the sequence, but my computers all crashed. So I was unable to get any further. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, so I guess I'd better stop there.